I was recently playing around with some bubble wrap when it occurred to me there's probably hundreds or even an ocean of thousands of people just yelling, how do you make a bubble wrap material? Kind of like a Noah's Ark situation. And I thought to myself, okay, I know how to make a bubble wrap material. I'll teach how to do this, etc. So, um, wonder tutorial, how to make bubble wrap. Let's get into it. So, <laughs> here's the material I made. This is what I'm going to show you how to make. It's a completely procedural material with displacement, with the whole nine. Um, and here are some of the features we have. So, uh, you can see uh, bubble wrap, some dots are popped, some of them are not. The resolution is going to be dependent on your uh, subdivision level, so that's higher resolution, etc. Uh, you're going to have control over the density of the uh, thing, so how many dots are there per square foot, square unit, whatever, uh, of bubble wrap. How many of them are going to be popped? So when it's zero, I guess it's they're all popped because I inverted it, and when it's one, none of them are popped, and you could go halfway in between. Um, and here I made a mask to show uh, the grids of which ones are popped. So none of them, all of them, half of them, etc. You get the point. Um, and then finally, so we have the density, the popping, and then uh, the size of the dots. Should they be big dots or small dots? And if they're very big, they'll kind of look like rectangles. Um, all this and more uh, now. <laughs> that, that was plenty of buildup. I'll try to get through it pretty quickly. So uh, before we can get to the material, just basic setup. So we have an HDRI environment, reflections, all of this. Here's how you set it up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything in my scene and delete it and replace it with the plane. This is what we're going to be working on. We're going to make a material on this. Uh, for the render settings, make sure that we are using cycles using the GPU and feature set experimental cycles because displacement only works in cycles experimental because we are going to add in a subsurf subdivision surface and we want this adaptive subdivision option which is not available unless you have experimental this just makes a divide uh, based on how much blender says we need it uh, we don't have to put in a number um, okay almost done uh, in the environment we're just going to set up an HDRI and I know there's a lot of steps to begin with but I don't know why I feel personally like responsible. Like I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> it's just a thing. Environment texture. If you go to rendered mode, you're going to see it. So film, transparent, you know the drill, material, make one. We're going to call it bubble wrap. So this is what we're going to be working in. And I'll move to the shading workspace in a second. Uh, but just make sure, and this is very important in the settings for your material, make sure you have this set to displacement only or displacement and bump. If you don't do one of these, uh, displacement will not end up working. Okay, cool. We've set everything up. Now let's actually talk about the nodes and start confusing people. Uh, if you're not good at math, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just follow the nodes and uh, it should work out. Um, so what I'm planning to do is to make bubble wrap. What you need to do is you have to have a bunch of circles. Each circle is going to define a bubble on our surface. Um, and we somehow need to scatter these circles in a way that each one has rising and some of them are distorted and stuff like that. Um, there's a couple ways to approach this, but here is the easiest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a Voronoi texture. Some people are like, what? Some people are like, genius. Uh, what Voronoi texture does is it scatters a bunch of points on our surface, and then this kind of gradient you're seeing, this kind of like splotchy cellular thing, is just showing the distance of any point to the nearest one of those scattered points. Uh, what this means is if I turn the randomness down, it's going to turn into a grid, and more so, we can actually control kind of the visibility of this by using a subtraction. So you can almost see the uh, circles forming here. And again, the randomness is just going to scatter those around. Uh, but long story short, this is a great way to make a grid of dots uh, without any work. So I'm just going to invert this um, so that it's uh, in the right direction. I don't know if this needs to be a big or small number. I guess a big number. This is going to make it so that, again, uh, each of these scattered points is essentially triggering one of these uh, circles to be formed. Long story short, Voronoi is good for circles. Uh, one thing you might notice is the circle is gradient, which is perfect. We want the the gradient to drive the displacement where it's only at the highest at the center of the circle and all this. It has that, uh, but it's not very normalized. Like the whitest white is probably like 0.5 or something. A uh, quick way to normalize, you take this, you divide it by what number? The same number that you have here. That will make sure that uh, the brightest point is white, I believe. A quick way to control this and make it like modular is you just uh, hook up a value thing. And now no matter what you do, it should be normalized and working, I believe. Oh, and make sure to clamp one of these. There we go. Um, okay, so now we, we have dots and uh, cool. And uh, by the way, I didn't mention this. Uh, Voronoi comes with its own scale slider. So this is how we add in more dots. Um, I'm going to stick to something like 15 while we make this. So again, uh, we can pick the size. And I think I'm happy with that. 
Okay, so let's move all these things over to the side. Um, awesome, now that we have our dots, let's just set up some basic displacement just so that it actually uh, deforms and displaces our surface and then we'll make it uh, look stylized and good. Um, so. Uh, to actually have this drive our displacement, again, we already went to material settings, enable displacement. Uh, just take a displacement node, connect it. What do we want to use as the height map? Well, this uh, circular thing we just made. So connect that to the height. Um, and you can see it kind of works and it also kind of doesn't. It kind of looks like a nail of beds and they're like, yeah, if you sit on a lot of um, nails, it doesn't pierce your back because the pressure is distributed over a larger surface area. Some of you know what I'm talking about. That, that's always scary, but then you sit on the nail beds, it's like, oh shit, I guess it's fine. Whereas if you sat on one nail, it would fucking go through your back and sever your spinal cord. Um, okay, so we have displacement. We, we've arrived at the uh, displacement. Uh, what do we do with it? Well, first of all, uh, it doesn't look very high resolution. Again, this is determined by the subsurf, so the lower the number. Uh, the more Blender will give resources for this uh, subdivision. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take the scale and bring it down um, so that these mounds aren't as uh, bulbous. And I'm just going to add more geometry, make it even lower. Pretty good. Um, so cool. We, we kind of have bubble wrap. If we were to use something like a uh, principled BSDF for the surface, um, you can kind of see what it looks like. Eh, it looks fine. A um, couple things I want to uh, fix and change uh, before we uh, move on here. Uh, first of all, I feel like the shape is uh, kind of incorrect here. Uh, so let's fix the shape. Uh, easy way to do this is we're just going to send this through an RGB curves, which will let us actually shape the profile of this a bit more. So you can see, um, you can literally change the curvature and things like this. So I'm just reshaping it like this. And you might have to kind of re... Um, make your scale smaller after this process but I think that uh, this looks pretty good okay cool <laughs> uh, we have our basic uh, bubble wrap thing to make it look like bubble wrap now that you've made this displacement setup uh, for the BSDF I'm just gonna use a principled uh, but the trick is you take transmission you bring it up that makes it kind of see-through in this bubble wrappy kind of way cool um, another thing is you want to take the roughness and bring it down until it's shiny but maybe not that shiny that's a bit too much. Um, and you could argue that even this is a bit too shiny. But either way, uh, th th this is our basic bubble wrap setup. You make it transmissive, you lower the roughness, and maybe you also lower the uh, transparency so it's kind of half see-through. Um, okay, basic bubble wrap, done. Um, but it kind of looks like garbage, so let's uh, make it look better. Uh, I'm going to call it bubble wrap, but available on Patreon, because you can get the blend on Patreon once we're done here. Um, how do we make this look better? Well, again, uh, some of the details are what makes this thing look photorealistic. So, for example, uh, making some of the bubbles taller than others, and some of them are going to be popped and kind of punctured with the wrinkle maps. Um, and also, uh, they're, they're kind of in a perfect grid. That's another thing that looks kind of lame. So let's fix all of these things. Uh, first of all, to fix the perfect grid thing, uh, remember one of the nice things about Voronoi texture that again, we filtered to make these circles. It has this randomness slider. So you, you increase the randomness. Bleh, randomness. Um, it's not only going to make the grid not perfectly grid, but it's going to make some of the circles bigger and smaller than others. And long story short, if you just add in a tiny bit of randomness, it will look a, mo a lot more organic than this. This perfect grid, nah. Bit of randomness. If you go too extreme, it kind of looks weird. So let's see what this looks like. Again, all of this is being sent to our displacement. Uh, this just makes it look a bit more organic, kind of breaks up the grid-like structure. Next thing we can do, again, is we are going to make some of these bubbles popped. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use a noise texture to basically say uh, these. this is our wrinkle map. So a noise texture, good source of randomness. Take the color ramp, make it more extreme, just so it's a bit more high contrast. Boop, boop, boop. Let's talk about that baking soda video I made for a second. What the fuck was that? Um, so take noise texture, uh, bring up the scale just so there's a bit more detail. And I'd also recommend uh, keeping your uh, like literal detail slider pretty low so that it's kind of like low frequency information. Uh, this is the noise texture we're going to be using to drive uh, the displacement uh, for some of these. OK, uh, how do we do this? Well, a simple way to do this, a simple way to think about this is we already have our circle map. If you take this and then you multiply it, so before it reaches displacement, you then multiply it uh, by our noise, the noise is only going to show up inside of these cells because otherwise it gets multiplied by black, which is zero. Uh, so if we look at it now, 
I mean, you you can tell it was, it's a bit uh, intense, but it does work, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, to make it less intense, I guess one approach we could use instead of just a stray multiplication, we mix RGB. So instead of multiplying, I'm going to mix both of these. Where do we mix them? Only where we have our circular factor map. Okay. Um, and this works uh, pretty well. <laughs> it makes it's, um, all the dots distorted. Uh, what I want to do is, first of all, bring down the intensity of this. So I'm just going to bring uh, the factor map, and I'm just going to multiply it by, if we multiply it by zero, we have perfect circles unpopped. If we have one, they're very distorted. What about halfway in between? I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't look too intense or anything. And we always, always want to bring down the geometry to get a cleaner look at what this looks like. I think that looks pretty good. If anything, maybe up the detail a little. Yeah. So there we go. Now we have our pop things. Uh, but how do we make it so our bubble wrap isn't popped in every single cell? Good question. Again, the magic of all of this is going to be in the Voronoi texture. The randomness, the grid-like thing, it's all from the Voronoi. Because if we look at the uh, color output, uh, you can see now we have a uh, basically a random color. Or another way to think about it is as a random number uh, for every single one of these cells. Um, in other words, if we take this, we send it through a math uh, greater than or less than, whatever you want. It's going to take the first uh, value, so the color is a vector. It's going to take the x or y or z coordinate, so it turns it into a float and says which of these are greater than 0.5, and it's going to give this like nice uh, cellular noise. Um, by the way, if you're seeing these weird artifacts, that's because of the displacement. It's not actually there. Don't worry about it. But um. It's showing it after it displaces it. Uh, but the nice thing about this is now we have a slider to control how many of these grid points are going to be popped or not popped. So think about this as a random like white noise generator uh, for this. So you take this, again, you uh, multiply it by this uh, greater than situation. And why do we do that? Because then only some of the uh, cells that are lit up by this greater than uh, thing are going to be multiplied by our noise to begin with. So you can see... And we should probably make this a slider since it's pretty important. Uh, you see, when we set this to 1, uh, I guess they're all not going to be popped. When it's 0, they're all popped. And when it's anywhere in between, you can see our grid is basically defining which of these are going to be popped. Um, by the way, um, all these node previews that you're seeing here that I used to explain, there's an add-on. Link in the description if you care. Um, but don't worry, you don't need it uh, to use Blender. Um, okay, uh, let's add in a couple more details. So I'm thinking if a cell is popped, it should also not be displacing as tall up, like the scale of the display. Like if it's popped, it needs to have flattened a bit because some of the air is gone. Um, again, super easy to do. So now instead of just having like the scale be the same everywhere, but some of them are distorted or whatever, uh, we can run it by a math expression. Why not? Um, so I'm going to take the scale and I'm going to multiply it. Hmm. Is this the way I want to do it? I guess. I mean, this is a bit overcomplicating it. Uh, I'll do it like this. So I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this. So instead of putting 0.075 in the scale, I'm going to put it here through a multiplication expression. And what are we going to multiply by? Uh, this grid thing, but on the uh, second socket. Uh, so the way you want to picture this is right now, I think we actually might even have it inverted or something, uh, but what we have is right now this uh, greater than thing is defining which cells are even displaced in the first place because they're either going to be multiplied by 0 or 1. So first of all, we need to invert this so it's the uh, normal cells that aren't uh, you know messed up. Uh, but second of all, uh, we even want the popped cells to be displacing a bit, not none. So I'm just going to add in kind of like a base level in addition. And you can see this kind of achieves what we want, where the popped cells aren't as tall. Uh, we could go a bit crazier with this. So maybe it's uh, 75, 76, I guess, percent of the way there. Um, again, when this is set to 1 and we clamp it and everything, they should be the same height. Uh, when we put it to 0 0.75, they're going to be 75% as tall or 50% uh, as tall, etc. Um, and then this number over here is going to be our overall like scale multiplier. And again, this is the kind of thing that looks way better when you're not zoomed in incredibly close to it. But it it, do, it does kind of hold up. Um, so there we go. Uh, here's what we have in our bubble wrap so far. We have a controller to say, do we want it to be a perfect grid? Do we want it to be a bit distorted? Um, probably that's too much, but we have uh, control over this. Uh, we also have control over the density of our bubble wrap. Um, so how many you know dots are there going to be? Uh, we have control over, I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah, this is our popped slider. Should they all be full, all be popped, whatever. Um, and then the size of our circles, I believe. Yes. 
Uh, we have control over all of this, uh, but we can do even better. O overall, it does look pretty photorealistic as is, uh, but we can take it up a notch. Um, so you're going to notice that all of these noise textures are basically the only thing in this uh, whole system uh, that is even remotely dependent on texture coordinates. Uh, so what I'm saying is let's pick a, a texture coordinate system. I'm going to use UV coordinates uh, to give us a bit more control than actually we've had before. By the way, when you use UV coordinates, you're going to have to adjust the uh, scale a bit, I believe. So I'm going to up it to 20, and then I'm going to use our size slider to make the dots uh, smaller. So you can see already how these are coming in handy. Maybe 20 is too much. Maybe 15 is fine. Either way, uh, point is, I'm using UV coordinates. Why am I using uh, UV coordinates? Because uh, now all we've done is we've just attached UV coordinates. We've basically changed nothing. And what we now get for free is it's going to be using the UV map of whatever object. So if I add in a loop cut here, you can see now the uh, bubble wrap actually deforms with our surface. So here's like a curved bubble wrap that's going around a, uh, I don't know, a cylinder or something. Um, if you were to before, and I think these are all the things that use our, uses our texture coordinates. Um, if you were instead to use like object coordinates or something like this, not only does it make it denser, but it doesn't really follow with our transformation, I don't think. At least that's not how it should be working. So I would recommend using uh, UV coordinates. Um, then you can just put this, whoops, let me bring those back. Uh, you can then put this on any mesh like a, a torus. So let me uh, subdivide the uh, torus a bit, apply that, and then add in our um, adaptive subsurf version. Apply our bubble wrap material. Um, and you can see it works. It's a bit stretched. But um, I guess we could just stretch this directly from the UV map. Uh, to fix this, we just take the UV map and we stretch it either on the Y or the X axis. It's going to be one of the two. As for which one, that's a good question. <laughs> um, might be X axis. Yeah, I think it's x-axis. That makes it look a bit more even. Um, and then you can scale everything down to make it take up less dots. Um, and you can see the bubble wrap is actually curving around the thing. But really, I, I guess you'd want to use it on a, a planar surface or something like this. Here's like the final version I made uh, with the node group and all this. So I'm going to make this uh, as available as a blend for the Patreon. This one's a bit cleaner. Uh, but the theory is basically the same. You see the RGB curves. You see the division. Um, it's all it's all here so anyways that's the essence of the uh, bubble wrap tutorial you can do whatever you want with it so uh we've made it to the end of the show 17 minutes in uh hopefully you learned something about making procedural bubble wrap i don't know what tutorial other tutorial would explain it but anyways uh patreon it exists uh, the, this is a list to the right cameras inverted it's not a list of uh, 800 some nodes no it's a list of i think over 800 now patrons thank you patrons um Patrons get what? Why are they supporting CG Matter Default Cube Channel? Maybe out of the goodness of their heart, or maybe uh, because they get uh, this bun. Wow. Uh, they get this bun file. Any other bun file I've ever uploaded over the last year or two to Patreon, so you get access to all of that with just a uh, one month subscription. You can then cancel whatever. Uh, you also get early access to tutorials, watch them before anybody else. If you're like, I don't know, you're you're going to sleep. You're like, oh, I can't go to sleep without my tutorial, but it comes out tomorrow. That's a way to fix that. Also, exclusive tutorials that I do not post on either channel. Recently, I went on like a 30 to 40 minute rambling about making a procedural conveyor belts, or at least the uh, materials are procedural to make the conveyor belts move. That was a super cool tutorial. Those are meant to be more advanced. Um, and uh, yeah, Patreon is a bunch of stuff. There's a link in the description. Check it out. See if you're interested. And um, I don't have anything more to say. Hopefully, you'll learn something about bubble wrap. <laughs>